targeting tribes in southern Yemen. Do we understand why they're doing it? Um, you know, the, the, the presence of Yemenis in the Mujahideen War in Afghanistan is the single largest presence of foreign fighters that have come into uh, Afghanistan. And, there was a, and that was at the time when the U.S. was supporting the, uh, the, the war against the Soviet occupation. And then after that, it descended into the chaos of warlords and various factions. And there was this sort of tradition in Yemen of being, uh, being fighters. Uh, and while Osama bin Laden is often referred to as having his ancestral roots in Yemen, and indeed that's true, there was a relatively small al Qaeda presence in uh, Yemen prior to 9-11. The, one of the most devastating attacks against the U.S. happened in 2000 off the coast of Aden, and the USS Cole was blown up, and that really put Yemen uh, on the U.S. counterterrorism radar. But it was only really in, in 2009 that a, a, a significant Al Qaeda presence started to pop up. And we're not, by significant, I mean 300 to 600 people by, by most estimates. What we've seen happen as the, the Obama administration in particular has escalated the drone campaign in Yemen is that it's actually grown the ranks of Al Qaeda uh, inside of Yemen. And it's also, and I think this is a more central point that was made by one of the people we interviewed, it, it, there's an incentive now for people to want to attack the United States because of the perception that the U.S. is killing civilians in southern Yemen, which, which there are two provinces where uh, Al-Qaeda is sort of most present. And what Rick and I have heard as we traveled around and talking to tribal leaders in Yemen, which are the key to anything there, is that the, the, the drone strikes were actually helping Al-Qaeda to recruit, and they were helping Al-Qaeda to grow. And so what the, what the United States is doing is dealing with a, a group that doesn't represent an existential threat to the United States, certainly represents a threat of potentially bringing down an airliner. And, and that needs to be addressed. I mean, no one wants U.S. airplanes blown up. But I think that the, the really sober question we have to ask ourselves as a country is, is the way we're responding uh, to these relatively small threats around the world actually making the likelihood of, of, a, of, a, of a greater attack or more blowback uh, stronger? And so there are people that are all high yet, no doubt about it. There are very bad people that want to do harm to people in the United States. Um, but the way that we're responding to it is ultimately helping those groups to achieve their goals, which is to strike fear into the hearts of people in this country and elsewhere in the world. So the U.S. is going after a relatively small group of people and in the process killing a lot of people that have nothing to do with Al-Qaeda and making them stronger. Yeah, I mean, on 9-11, on there were only a handful of Al-Qaeda in the world and they controlled no territory. They were like on the run and hiding. After 10 years, billions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of people killed thousands of American military lives are lost. Al -Qaeda, there are thousands of members of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda controls like, actual pieces of territory in you know, countries in Africa and Yemen. I mean, it is, uh, no matter what you think about this program, you know, the, the drone program, the, the targeted killing program, morally, no matter what you think, uh, uh, sort of democratically, about the lack of oversight and transparency of this, it is phenomenally counterproductive. Um, I mean, the, all this money, all this debt, uh, and, and Al-Qaeda is only grown. One thing that you, uh, one thing that you uncovered in Somalia that I think one of your articles was a black site operated by um, the U.S. How does that fit into the overall narrative you uh, uncovered in Somalia? You definitely have a lot of discussion in the film that very powerful to the overall So the story, the story that he was asking about a story that I, I did uh, last summer um, about a, uh, a prison that is in the basement of the Somali National Security Agency. Um, and, and what happened was that when we, when we flew into Mogadishu, um, Rick and I saw this very new compound that had been built at the Aden Airport. And, uh, and it looked to us like a thought with forward operating base that we'd seen in Afghanistan. And, and bizarrely, it was sort of painted Somalia's called the Pink House. And, uh, and, and, and as we settled in, we were asking our contacts in Somalia, you know, what, what is that facility that's at the airport there? It looked, you know, it looks unusual and new. And they said, oh, that's Guantanamo. <laughs> they said, what do you mean it's Guantanamo? Like, oh, that's where the Americans are. And, uh, and, and, and to make a long story short, during the course of my investigation, I talked to senior Somali intelligence officials who were liaising with U.S. military intelligence and the CIA in Mogadishu. And, and what it is, is that the U.S. Has, has set up a counterterrorism training center at that airport 
where they are training uh, a Somali force that is going to go out and hunt down the leadership of Al Shabaab. The U.S. wants to have Somalis doing the, the, the hunting, so to speak. And the U.S. is paying them in cash every month. They line them up and they pay them $200 a month in cash, which is a lot of money in, uh, in Somalia. It's worth more than the Somali military gets paid. Um, and, and what we learned as we were investigating that is that the U.S. also have, has access to a basement prison in the Somali NSA where they're interrogating people that are, uh, are snatched by these forces or in some cases are rendered. And if you think the Obama administration isn't doing rendition, you know, you're wrong. I mean, the Obama administration has continued full spectrum from Clinton to the present. And, and so the, the U.S. in some cases is asking the Kenyan government to pick up someone in easily the slum Somali slum in Nairobi, Kenya, and, and fly them into Somalia so that they can be questioned. Um, and, and when I asked the CIA for comment about this, it was, it was an unusual experience for me because when I spoke to the, to the CIA, they said, yes, that sounds right. And I sort of described what I was saying. I mean, you're not used to having that kind of a, a response. And he said, well, I'm going to have to get back to you in, in with more details. And then this, you know, the CIA confirmed the basic thrust of what I just said to you. They said, yes, we have a facility. Yes, we're training the Somalis. We don't run that prison, but we do, on occasion, debrief prisoners always in the presence of Somali agents. We met journalists that have been taken to that uh, prison as well. There are a number of, of uh, foreign citizens that are being held there, including some with Western passports. Um, I, just, I just wanted to give David Riker, our writer, uh, a chance to say something. We had an amazing collaboration with David a year ago. Rick and I thought we were finishing our film. And David is a great filmmaker who does fiction primarily. And he made a film in the late 90s called La Ciudad. And his new film comes out in March called The Girl, starring Abby Cornish and Will Patton. Um, and David was just going to come in to sort of give us some notes on, on our script. And um, what ended up happening is, uh, is David worked for a year with us on rebuilding our, our own film. I wasn't originally going to be